we have been looking at uh, x bar theory in order to see how a sentence is structurally represented. To see how a sentence is structurally represented, we have looked at the structure of, an, of a phrase that is internal structure of a phrase, what it consists of and then how they combine with another one. If you see little bit beyond the structure of a phrase or with the help of a structure of a phrase about its about the process of combination of other uh, combination of a phrase with the other phrase, there are two things that come up very significantly and they are uh, the relationship between head and a complement and the relationship between a complement and an adjunct. That defines to a great extent how the structure is going to look like. Okay? But before we come to this, dis this distinction and how to represent a complement and an adjunct, I will again go back and talk to you a little bit about uh, how a sentence is called an inflectional phrase and then what are the components that are called inflection and how they are represented in this structure. Okay? So, these are the two things that we hope to have done uh, today. Uh, let us let us see how we go, go through this thing. So, to take you through these things again, no questions here. We understand the phrase structure that is uh, in, in, this, in this representation we are trying to put categories to, uh, we, we, are, we are trying to indicate phrases in the sentence and its relationship with another phrase. Okay. This is how we looked at a noun phrase which is students of physics. Right? We are still working with the same sentence for the purpose of simplicity and the for, for the purpose that we understand the sentence and the structure properly. So, this is how a sentence is, how, an, how a noun phrase is represented where the important part that I want you to look at is the head of the first NP has PP as its complement and then in that PP the head is P which is off and another NP is the complement of that P. Okay? See, complements belong to heads. Okay? When we say in the first NP, we have PP is the complement of N, that is complement of head. The relationship, whatever it denotes, whatever we mean by complement, complements are of heads. Making sense? Complements are of heads, not to the phrase. However, a complement is part of a phrase. Okay? A complement is part of a phrase, but it belongs to heads. All right? uh, we, we are going to look at, as I promised you, the relationship between a complement and adjunct and uh, differences and similarity between them. And uh, once we are done with uh, representation of this structural representation of a sentence and phrase, we are also going to look at some configurational relationships that, that comes up little later. So, let me not talk about them. And then again, uh, in, the, in the last NP, which is the complement of P, you see we have N, which is the, the complement is an NP, which is in turn is an N, which is physics. And in this one you see there is no spec and no complement any further and then it stops there. Okay? However, the spaces are available, which, which means 
again this physics this n physics can potentially take another complement but it it doesn't have it in this case all right is this is this structure clear now this is structure clear to everybody now okay now we looked at the structure of vp yesterday we didn't have questions so far right was good okay we here again uh, we have uh, two two things to keep in mind the np pizza is the complement of the verb like and pp that is in the evening is an adjunct to the whole v bar that is adjunct of the verb and therefore it is simply adjoint by a manipulative fashion which where space comes through v bar the the idea of a, this intermediate category is to provide us a space to represent several categories and through that we we see that pp gets projected far apart from its complement in it's a it's a coincidence or or it's a structural point that it stays higher than the and higher than the complement np which is pizza but you can see it's too far apart structurally from the complement do you see that it's too far apart from the complement everybody you see that it's too far apart from the complement okay and then again within that pp which is adjunct pp you have the np which is the complement of p uh, we have we have seen these things i am i'm only repeating these things for you to see the structure uh, categorically once again now we started looking at this thing uh, where we stopped yesterday and then we saw that when we when we project the whole sentence we project it as ip do you see a systematic do you see a system underlying this structure that every structure has same system which is specifier head and complement specifier above head and complement and in among head and complement there is a sister relationship do you see this structure in every 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 structure of every phrase right so the whole sentence is projected as ip where the head of this ip is i which means inflection as i have as i discussed with you yesterday and we have discussed these things earlier that there are two parts in a sentence one part is called uh, one part consists of functional categories and the other part consists of lexical categories things that belong to lexical categories are nouns pronouns adjectives verbs prepositions and so on stuff that belong to belong to functional categories are things like tense aspect agreement and a, and their components like number person gender etc so uh the the point here is all such functional things functional stuff are part of i okay all of them are bundled in the head called i and we in short or or the name of this thing is inflection so all those functional elements are part of functional la inflectional layer in the sentence the the idea that sentence must be projected as an ip captures the notion that such elements that are that is functional elements in a sentence are significant aspect of sentence they are all they they are the th they are the chunk which make a sentence 
which is significant part of a sentence. Not that it reduces significance of its lexical categories, but the point is functional elements bind lexical categories to make a sentence. Are we good so far? Yes, no, difficulties? Can I take your, take this thing as yes and move ahead? Okay. Uh, we had a couple of questions here and I, I, I think we have answered those questions and they should be clear to you. Is there any aspect of, of this functional thing which is still not clear or making any difficulty for you? This will be the time for you to let me know. Not, not that you cannot let me know other, later, but this would be the right time to talk about this. Is there any, anything else, any further confusion, problems? How do we define an adjunct, right? Uh, which you are not sure about that, right? I'm coming. I'm coming to that in a moment. Give me, give me, give me a moment. Do you see the representation of an of an adjunct? This this is the reason why I am carrying one adjunct all along, without talking much about them and without giving you a definition for it. All along, I am I am carrying an adjunct in the sentence, at least j just because. It should be in front of you at least. Do you, do you see the adjunct? I am going to define that in a moment. Do you see the adjunct here in this phrase? In the, in the evening. What I see that you are not sure why it is an adjunct. But, but when I tell you in the evening is adjunct and pizza is the complement, do you see the difference between the two? Forget about their definitions. Do you see the difference between the two in terms of their structural representation? Yes or no? Everybody? You see that, right? You do not see that, okay? What do you see about the difference between the two? To accommodate adjunct, extra layer is added. That is, by, by notion in this whole structure, the place of an adjunct is an additional place. Okay? The place of an adjunct is not part of the phrase. Adjunct does not have a space in the original structure of a phrase. Do you see this thing at least? Do you understand the original structure of a original place in a structure? Quick, quick, tell me. If you, if, if there is a problem, tell me that we, I, I don't understand the original structure of a of a phrase. Then, then only I can move move on and uh, talk to you about what original structure of a phrase means. Do you understand when I say original structure of a phrase? <coughs> No, 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 hold on. Answer my question. Then I will answer your question. The original structure of the phrase is you have a specifier. X double yeah, sure. Go ahead. Then you have specifier. Specifier. Uh, uh, then you have a X bar. X bar. And then it has a X, X and then a complement. complement. Right? Is this is the original structure of a phrase. Here, X bar is just a mechanism to go further down. Right? Done. We are left with three things, specifier, head and a complement. Do you see any space for an adjunct here? There is no. That is what I mean by, by blueprint of a phrase, that is the structure of a phrase. So, in the structure of a phrase, there is no place for adjunct. Okay? The, the place for complement, however, is located. We, we do have a space for complement. So, when I, when I am asking you, the, do you see the difference between the two? At least the initial difference which you can see clearly on the screen is pizza as an NP is the complement of the head which is V, right? At least this much is totally clear. 
the same status the, the, the PP in the evening does not have the same status. Do you see this, this point? That does not have the same status. What is the status that it has? That is, how is it represented? Is, is my question clear? Is, this, is the question making sense to you? How is it represented? It is not following the blueprint of a phrase. Ha However, it is not violating also the structure of a phrase. Do, do you see this, 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 this is smart play here? Uh, do you see this? This is what we call manipulation. The, the smart play is we do not want to violate a structure. That is, what will be violation of a structure? If we let us say if we bring a specifier down and we take complement up, that will be a total blatant violation of uh, structure and probably we will not be able to capture anything with that. Right? We are not also violating the, its binary structure, right? which is we are not saying that we are not saying that we have an XP here and we have specifier and we have X bar and here is our head, right? here is our complement and now we have an adjunct, so let us put here. That is not what we are saying because this is again a violation of what we started with, right? out, out not because it does not look good or anything, out because this does not tell us anything. If we say what is the problem here? If we say this is the space for our adjunct, right? what is the problem? What is the conceptual ambiguity and mess up here? Structure is not binary. Structure. That is, structure is not binary and what is it not capturing? It, it also tells you that there is no distinction between a complement and adjunct. In terms of its structural representation here, there is no distinction between a complement and adjunct. That, that is one, which in turn means that the fact that a head could be, let us say, a head like, like, which is a verb, right? And we are saying this is transitive, plus transitive, right? Which means by definition, it is going to take one NP complement. Understand this? We are saying because verb as a head, if it is transitive, it is going to take an NP complement. In that notion, we are not saying anything about adjunct. We are not saying whether the transitive verb will take an adjunct also, whether it will take two adjuncts, whether it is not going to take any adjuncts. Such things are not guaranteed by the nature of the verb. And if that does not follow from the nature of the verb, then, then uh, what we end up saying here is we do not care about an about a complement and adjunct. All of them have same status. See this thing? Which is taken care of in this structure that you see on the screen. That is not violating the fundamental structure of a phrase. What it is doing, it is just adjoining another, creating one more layer, right? Reduplicating the same thing, which is V bar, right? With that, it is keeping the adjacency requirement between the head and the complement intact. It is keeping the spec position high up. It is only taking, reduplicating this thing and taking another space for a PP or, or anything that comes here as ad, ad, adjunct to tell us that look, there is a difference between these two. So, do you see structurally the difference between an adjunct and a, and a, and a complement? Now, I, I am not yet giving the definition of this thing in literal terms, but I am 
bringing you to a point where you can define adjunct by yourself. Right? Adjuncts are adjoined elements in the structure. If we are if we are trying to define an adjunct structurally, we can say they are adjoined elements in a structure. They are always going to represent themselves with this adjunction that is creating another space because they do not have a space inherently within the phrase. Clear? Okay. I am coming, coming to adjunct and co complement and adjunct again it to, to see to see little bit more about them. Okay. Now let us look at the the inflection part separately in bringing certain things in focus. You have seen the structure of a VP and I want you to keep in mind the first point from here is the VP is complement of I. Okay? With, the, with VP what we were saying is what we have seen so far that there are two parts of a sentence. In our earlier discussions I have told you there are two parts of a sentence. One is subject, the other is predicate. Remember? And when we said everything else in a sentence, by everything else we meant everything other than the subject is predicate, right? which we essentially mean VP. Okay? Everything else in the VP, because you see even when we are talking about adjuncts and we are, we are making a distinction between an adjunct and a complement, it is still part of VP. Understand this thing? It is still part of VP. Why is it part of a VP? We are not doing any charity by saying that the adjuncts are part of VP. These, these poor things do not have any place anywhere. So, let us accommodate them in VP. That is not what we are doing. We are putting it in the proper place that in the evening is talking about the action done, action captured by VP, by V. What is happening in the evening? What, happen, what happens in the evening? Liking of pizza takes place in the evening. Right? Therefore, we are keeping it in the VP. It is part of VP by its right. It is just that it does not have the same status as, as uh, the complement. Okay? Is, is, is this conceptually clear to you? Any doubt, anything that comes to your mind, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Adjunct is, is it like a phrase of an adverb or? Exactly. Everything that is not part, not subcategorized by verb. By subcategorized, I mean everything that is not required, desired and guaranteed by the verb is adjunct. What you see being guaranteed by the verb is its complement. Okay? That is what do you mean by guaranteed and subcategorized? What we mean is the, the reason, the, the, the fact that this verb is a transitive verb, it needs an object which is its complement. That is what we mean, this complement is subcategorized, required by the verb, desired by the verb. Now, this thing is not desired by the verb. That is, this thing verb does not need essentially. We need, we want to, we want to say more things about that, right? It, like, like pizza is fine. Students like pizza. As far as formation of the sentence is concerned, that is essential elements of a sentence is concerned, we are done. Re remember, let us not lose focus that we are talking about required elements of a sentence. We are done. And information that comes through adjunct is an additional information. Therefore, we have to keep it where it belongs and it belongs to VP. It talks about the verb that liking in the evening. Uh, but is it compulsory that it should sort of explain the 
So it can add, it can add, it can say something to the noun phrase also. In that case, it will be contained within noun phrase. Okay, it that is, just like a complement belongs to head, in a subcategorized way, in a required way, an adjunct also belongs to the phrase, not in a subcategorized way, but as long as the adjunct is or adverb is talking about the head it will be projected in the same head. Since this adjunct is project is talking about the verb, it is being projected inside the verb. How it is projected inside a noun phrase, I am going to show you that in a, mo in a moment. Okay? Now, so everything here is part of VP right? and then we have a subject. Now, so in this, in the, in the scheme of a subject and predicate, what is not visible is the elements represented by I, which essentially binds these two things. Please bear with me and help me understand that you follow this. Do you see what I am trying to show you? That in this scheme of subject and predicate, what is not clearly visible is I, the elements that bind the two things together. Namely, look at what is being projected in I. And these are not the things that we are hearing for the first time. Am I right? Do we, do we understand I thing? I, I do want to move little faster, but by looking at you sometimes I get lost and then I, I, I do not get a clear idea to whether these things are making sense or not, whether I am, whether I can go little with, with the normal speed or not or I need to go with the speed breakers and reduce the speed. So if you can help me a little bit, then I will then I'll understand. I do not know face reading. Okay? Do, you, do you see what is coming in the eye? All of them are part of I, which is not clear here. Okay? So, this is another advantage of X bar theory that things that were not possible to project with the phrase structure rules are being projected in the X bar theory and it has a space for projecting all such things. Clear? I in, in totality contains all agreement, tense, aspect. It may contain more, more stuff. Whatever is whatever you think is invisible in a sentence, they all belong to I. And therefore, I is the head of the sentence and IP is the projection of a sentence. Okay? VP is the complement of this I and therefore, it has direct relationship with the functional elements. By it I mean VP has direct relationship with functional elements in a sentence. It is directly combined or bind, bound with the functional elements. Okay? Now, talking about the subject, it is it's, it's, uh, projected in the specifier position of the IP, which captures the notion where we started with that the subject is outside the predicate. Okay? Subject is outside the predicate, it gets projected in the specifier position of the IP. Okay? Now, before I, 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 I think you have already seen the structure of this NP which is in the specifier position of the VP. So, n n not every time we need to put a specifier, we know that that is in a specifier position. We simply put an NP there. Right? We know this position is for a specifier and in this specifier, what we have seen in the specifier position of an NP, what have we seen? In the specifier position of an NP, 
what have we seen so far? Articles, Articles determiners and things like that. In this specifier position of a sentence, what we see is an NP, NP. Okay? Now, this NP is going to represent sentence, sorry, this NP is going to represent subject. Now, depending upon what a subject is in a sentence will come in this place. Okay? And you have already seen the structure of this NP. Is it okay structure of the NP, students of physics? Right? Okay. Now, be, before I go and talk to you about other stuff, there is one more thing that I want to tell you right here. You see, uh, which is which, which we will not discuss at length right now, uh, because that comes much later. And if if at all we get time in this class, I'll talk to you. Look at this. Uh, do you see anything in the spec position of VP? like every other phrase, VP is also going to have a specifier, right? it has a spec position. There are two positions about subjects, there are two things that have been argued about subject. In one notion, people have tried to put subject as a spec of NP, IP, maintaining this notion that the subject is outside the predicate. Okay? In the other position, some people have argued that subject actually originates inside VP, okay? which is the spec position of VP. And then later on, it gets projected outside. Now, it don't, it's, it's not going to make, make much sense right now or, or maybe I am underestimating you, uh, underestimating you. But I am only trying to say that there are two positions for the representation of subject. None of them, a, a, a discussion into that is not relevant at this point. Those are just two theoretical positions and both positions have their own arguments. Why inside VP? Why outside VP? They have their own arguments. right? At one level, both can be combined together and one can see the see how they are actually represented. But, but that is not relevant right now. You may ask a question, if it is not relevant, why are you, why are you talking about it then? The reason why I am talking about it is when I, did I, did I talk to you about the notion of deep structure and surface structure? Not yet. Okay? Whatever I am discussing so far, either with the phrase structure rules and, or with the structure, these are representation of sentence, projection of lexical and functional categories both at deep structure. Okay? We have talked about I language and E language. Remember, I language and E language. Is that distinction clear to you? Within I language, now forget E language for the time being. Within I language, there could be two layers. One is deep structure which is called D structure and the other is called surface structure which is written as S structure. Both are parts of I language. Now what happens is, we are still talking about deep structure, right? We are still talking about deep structure. When the sentence gets completely, when the sentence gets a complete projection, that stage is called S structure. When, the, when you see this complete projection, that is projection of every single element in a sentence is done, then we call that S structure. Okay? So, the argument, the reason why I talked about inside VP and outside VP is is the, the people who argue it is inside VP, for them, it originates inside VP at D structure and then it gets projected at S structure outside VP. Now, do not don't, don't pay much attention to this thing right now. I just wanted to talk about deep structure and S structure. I just wanted to bring in these two notions. I am going to show you more to connect these two things and then probably it will make little bit more sense. Okay? So, let us go step wise. Uh, PP 
E is not following the blueprint of uh, stru uh, phase structure. Okay. If we want to be pedantic, we can uh, actually introduce a P bar and a specifier, and then uh, P prime uh -huh. splits into P and N P. Yes. Will that be correct? Yeah. No. no. That's that. That is definitely correct, and that is correct not because it's not following this the phase structure. The moment we say PP is the adjunct, that phase is going to follow exactly that the original phase structure rules. What we are saying, it's not, it's not is it's not, it does not belong to VP. That's all we are saying. To accommodate in accommodate it. In VP, we need some extra extra layer. That is all we are saying. When we say it does not belong, once it is a PP, it is going to take, it is going to be projected like PP you see here. And, and, and again, because I have shown you this thing, so I, I have put that in, in short, that is shortcut. Clear? Sure. This thing clear? Now. I want you to look at this thing little carefully. Do not be scared of this thing, it is exactly what you have seen so far. I give you 20 seconds to look at it and if there is anything that is not making sense, let me know. I, I, my apologies to you for, for the smaller fonts, I, I did not put a smaller fonts. It's, you know, you know how it be becomes a small. When you try to project too many things, it's a small. Now, tell me if you see anything so far, anything here that you haven't heard so far. AS, AS, where is ASRP? It should be AGRP. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, that should be AGRP. Agreement phrase, yes. That is not ASR, that is AGR. Sorry. That that you see below AGR bar and then AGR, right? That that is a small typo. Good. Then you see, so so we start with IP, right? Then we go to AGR P, then we go to TP, and then we go to ASP, and then we go to VP. You see this thing? Now, even by making it a small, that is smaller fonts, I am trying to trying to connect them in phrasal fashion. When they are actually represented, you know, you, you are going to see that only head positions of these things are important. Okay? So, when people actually draw them, they do not draw spec positions for these things. But, but for you to see, I have tried to draw spec position, just so that you see and you see how they are combined. Okay? Now, remember, again, when I say they are not drawn, I am not saying they are not there. We just do not draw that, as that, that space, that is a spec. If we want to draw, nobody wants to stop us, it is just going to be longer and if you are okay with that, that's, then it is fine. Now, so we go, we start with IP, we have the spec position of IP, we start with the head I and then AGRP we have again a spec position of that and head of that, right? In the complement position of AGRP, what do you see? In the complement position of AGRP, TP, right? It has again its own head and a specifier and what is in the complement position of TP? Aspect and then again it has, own, it has its own spec and as head and in the complement position of a TP, what do we see? In the complement position of ASP, what do you see? VP. VP. Now, this so far, where you see the red line, right? So far, is just the expansion of this IP, this I. Do you see this thing? What, what you see in the next slide, before, before the red line, is simply expansion of this I. Am I making sense? Are these things making sense to you? If you want to, you want me to take a pause. I can wait and talk to you. Sorry, this, uh, 
exactly. Exactly, it, it's just been expanded. So here we are saying, whatever is the agreement, let let's take the sentence again the same sentence. Students of physics like pizza in the evening, right? What do you see in the I position here? We are just putting present tense. We are putting one thing. I can put again here present tense, indefinite aspect, right? And singular agreement. That's all. all. All three of them I can put in the I position and I am still saying the same thing. Okay? To expand this I, that is to put more things, I, I have tried to tell you that all three of them are here. Right? In the next one, the all I am saying is in the I, again, sorry, uh, in the I position where you see present tense, that is not going to be there. I am sorry, that is another, another error. Do you, do you understand what I am saying? In the I position here, the present that you see, that is not going to be here. It is going to be here. Okay? It is going to be here. So, you are going to have singular agreement here, okay? present tense here and indefinite aspect here. Okay? Get this thing? Now, there are still couple of anomalies in this structure. Once you, once you try to follow this thing, someone can ask you then what is the need of I? You are already projecting everything. Do you understand my question? If I am already projecting everything separately, that is AGR, T and aspect, then what is the need of this I? Understand me? Understand this thing? So, so people say, look, just get rid of this thing. There is no need of that. You can start with AGRP. Okay? Because I eventually is the bundle of all these things. So, we can either put I or these things. There is no need to put everything. And when we bundle them together, we put I. When we do not bundle them together, we expand them. We do not need to put I. Am I drawing your attention to the anomaly in this, this structure? You see that? Okay. Uh, and, and please ignore that present tense in the in I. It uh, when while making this thing, I just left it there. Now, if, there are more questions, which which are again not relevant at this level. Questions are: How do you know that the agreement precedes tense? Or or if you say, okay. You do not agree with this, you think tense precedes agreement, let us put tense first. Then the question is, how do you decide that? You, you cannot be arbitrarily deciding these things. In, a, in any scientific projection, one cannot be arbitrarily, arbitrarily deciding this thing, that which one precedes what. Understand this thing? Now, I am just raising this question and, and, and leaving this question here. However, there is an answer to this question. There is a way. In the syntactic investigation of a sentence or syntactic investigation of language, people have identified which inflectional category proceeds first and then which one comes later and which one comes later. This has been done. But this, at this stage for our understanding, the question exists. Do you understand the question? All right. So, leaving these questions aside, what I want you to see that all that you see above this red line. Do you see something above the red line? All of them are called functional layer. Functional layer of a sentence. Okay? Functional layer of a sentence. And beyond this, below the red line where you, you see VP is starting, okay? when you see VP is starting, that is called lexical layer of sentence. So, all along what we have been talking about functional categories and lexical categories, that is the distinction. And if you, if you can see this distinction between functional layer and lexical layer, okay, do you see this thing? Then probably you will be able to appreciate 
then probably you will be able to appreciate why someone would be tempted to put the hypothesis forth that subject originates inside VP. Let me say it again. If you see the distinction between functional layer and lexical layer, then probably you can appreciate why someone will put forth the hypothesis that the subject originates inside VP. Because subject eventually is an NP, it is a lexical category. How does it belong to functional layer? Understand this thing? So, that is the genesis of someone's position on why it should originate inside VP. Number one, then the question is if it does not originate inside VP, if, if it originates inside VP, how does it go up? These questions are answered phase by phase later. But I want you to see the relevance of these questions with the help of this understanding. Okay? 